I want to talk about <laughs> Stephen Donziger and and this case here. Um, we hadn't done anything on this yet, not because we didn't think that it was important. In fact, we thought that it was so important and so egregious and so clear um, that you know we didn't need to cover it on on this show, uh, just because we you know it's a one day a week show and we have to pick our stories, um, you know, to, for maximum impact. But this is just something that should make your blood boil. This story is so unbelievable. Um, it, it, it cuts at everything from corporate power, but to the complete erosion of, of our democracy in, in unfortunately very clear ways. Um, and law. I've, just been, I've just been amazed, Matt. I mean, I will talk for people who aren't familiar. We'll give you all the, the breakdown of, of what this is, why he matters, what this fight's about. Um, but I was just saying to Matt before we went live today, trying to like seeing how the lack of coverage in like mainstream media of this um has just been infuriating because yeah. this is just like if you're any kind of a journalist this is the story of of a lifetime to cover right big corporation coming after a human rights lawyer for defending indigenous folks from you know just wanton destruction of the environment right it's just, i don't know this seems like something that's, that's a no-brainer i'm not saying that people aren't covering it you can definitely find it on the back page of the newspaper um but this is not the big story of of the past couple of, of weeks and it really should be no will meniker of chapo has put more effort uh yes. toward this story than probably all major cable tv networks combined uh all personnel <laughs> and right? will is a much better inter interviewer I and <laughs> yeah. than, than most of those for folks in, in the first place but yeah i mean this is the thing is it sort of has been left to it's to a story media. that corporate media sort of designed not to tell like this is the dystopia that they are basically handmaidens for well, it's one of those stories that when they do cover it too, um, uh, you know, not to turn this whole thing into a media critique, but right. like, it is such an example of like the press release press that we have in this country um, because there's a lot of like both sides um, around this case that really, really uh, there is just, <laughs> it's, it's clear cut, right? This is a, a, a corporation, extremely evil corporation using all the power that they have, including um, utilizing and pressurize, pressuring state actors to act on their behalf um, against someone. But let, let's just give a quick breakdown and, and, and we could talk about some of the more egregious things here. For people who aren't familiar with Steve, um, Stephen Donziger, you know, he's a lawyer, human rights lawyer who worked on a decades long case um, to bring um, to light the human rights abuses against indigenous people in Ecuador by Texaco, which is now owned by Chevron. Um, not, you know, and, and if that was just what he did, that would be an absolutely noble um, effort. But Stephen did something that typically doesn't happen. He won. Um, and he won a $9.5 billion judgment against Chevron um, for the destruction and the, the purposeful pollution of the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. And what has he gone in um, as, as a result of this? A huge target on his back. Um, and in this case, it is the state, it is the legal system um, that has been called in to do the hit against him. So, he wins this massive judgment, it takes decades, um, but it was a judgment um, th that um, was, was ruled in Ecuador, right? And because there weren't assets, enough assets held in Ecuador to sort of you know, pay these things out, these, they had to be held. Um, trial had to be held in the United States, Argentina, and other countries, basically to try to get these, these assets, assets from Chevron, right, to implement the judgment against them. Um, and this is where, uh, corporations like Chevron have a lot more ability, uh, to kind of put their thumb on the scale of justice. Um, do you have something, Matt? No, I'm just, I'm looking at the Washington Post's coverage of this stuff. And just like this headline from 2016, just like the, the neutral, like Chevron claims another round in endless jungle fight. Like, yeah. Oh Lord. Is that a really <laughs> that's their headline? I mean, Jesus like, Christ. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. And, and, and if you're not, if, if you, if you don't have people sort of pointing to this and saying like, you need to pay attention to this, you know, it just seems like another kind of procedural fight. What happened here? I mean, and what we're talking about right now, um, sp specifically about this case, cause we could do a whole episode, honestly, about this case and all the things um, that were exposed and all the things that were done. Um, but specifically what's happening right now, is Stephen Donziger um, ha was held for over two years, I believe, on house arrest in pretrial um, 
on a contempt of court charge, right? A misdemeanor, um, which is extremely, extremely, extremely rare for anyone to be held pretrial for something of, of this nature. And people should understand what it's for is because a, a, a judge ruled that he should hand over his laptop and other personal um, information to Chevron and Chevron's lawyers um, <laughs> so that they could use it in, in, in the court case, right? As a part of discovery, um, I, I, I believe, right? And obviously, Obviously, um, a massive corporation like Chevron that wants to make an example of someone like Stephen Donziger, he, he, he refused um, to turn it over because one, it wasn't lawful in the first place. Um, and two, they were obviously going to try to use this for a whole host of, of other things <laughs> not to do uh, with the case itself. Right? And also that, that side, that is also like broadly speaking, that is chilling on any lawyer who might want to go yes. up against them in the future. Yes. No, no, no. To have to hand over your, your laptop to your opponent is absolutely insane on, on any terms, but especially on these terms. Right. Yeah. Um, and like, that's the, that's the one thing to really note here, um, is that, uh, this is certainly about getting revenge against, uh, Stephen Donziger. Um, but it's also about making a threat that like they not only have a lot of power and influence, but they have their guys on the inside, um, to try to push results in, in the way uh, that they would like to see them. And you come at us and it's going to be messy for you and you're going to get exposed. Yes. And like, and, and we'll get to some of those, those folks in a second, but just to speed everyone up, if you're not familiar, um, he's in there for two years, uh, house arrest, right. Ankle bracelet, house arrest. You know what I mean? Just like, like an insult, um, to, to somebody who not only should be free to walk around, but should be celebrated, celebrated. in the streets. <laughs> right. <parade>. Um, <laughs> He was, he's held for two years under a pretrial house arrest. Um, and he was just sentenced, um, for to six months in prison and typically in a situation, which is a travesty on its own, but on top of all of that, typically after somebody had already served so much time under house arrest, the, the judge would just chalk it up to time served. Right. Um, but they did not Um, and the judge here, judge Laurieta Presca, and we'll get into her and, and all these other folks in a moment. Um, literally said that Stephen Donziger like needs to be hit by the provo- proverbial two by four, right? This is somebody who literally had it out for him. Let's add not only the absurdity of the um, of, of her ruling here, right, and of her sentencing. Stephen Donziger was de- denied a trial by jury. So this in in this situation, this judge who very clearly has a vendetta against him, right, um, was also the jury and the sentencer, which is just absurd, right? It's it's ridiculous that that even is allowed to happen in, in this country. It would have been ridiculous two hundred years ago. Yeah, um, I mean, this, so he's now sentenced uh, to to six months, and he's going to appeal, and we're going to uh, put up some uh, calls to action and, and things of, of that nature. Actually, Matt, if you're able to. I, well, I got done free Don There's Zicker. a video of him actually speaking that would be helpful on, on the website that I sent to you. On free Don Zicker, it looks down unless it's up for you, but unfortunately, freedonziger.org. Oh, is- yeah, this, the website is down. Yeah, I, I wonder what's going on with that. There's still links to the defense fund if you want to donate and stuff, but it looks like... Um, wow, well, this web, I mean, that's ju- that's just sort of... This is happening to us live. I don't know if this is just, you know, a, a kind of technical difficulty... Um, or not, we'll find out more later, but I mean, that was a very well populated, uh, website. So that, you know, this wasn't a kind of rinky dink operation. Mm. Uh, that's actually quite, uh, um, quite, quite frightening. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we, uh, I would have loved to have, have, have gotten his, uh, his words there, but let me see. Um, because oh, I wanted to, okay, I can show you some. This is what we stuff. got now. Yeah, this. Uh, oh, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's site currently down. But yeah, you can still donate if you need. To. To. I mean, there's still the link to the donate uh, fund. So you can go onto the website freedonziger.com.com uh, and, and you can find ways to, to donate and hopefully it'll be repopulated um, soon. But let's just talk about this, this, the, 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 the lack of justice in this case, right? Because it's just much like, like the sentencing is ridiculous, right? All these other things are ridiculous. But like when you start to, look into this case, like the more you learn, the more ridiculous it gets, right? It's one of those moments where like, it's bad enough on the outset, but it gets worse. This is, has been a long fight, um, that, that he has had with Chevron, um, 
And the first character in this story is a guy named Judge Lewis A. Kaplan, right? Who is the person who ended up picking Prescott to be the judge against um, Stephen Donziger, right? But Kaplan was overseeing um, the the case of you know wrongdoing. Um, basically, so what happens is after the nine point five billion dollar um, judgment, it gets brought into the United States, and then Chevron um, sues Stephen Donziger um, for the case itself. Right. Um, and they start to sue him, alleging that there was wrongdoing in the case. Um, and it is a whole long drawn out trial. Again, we should just probably do a whole episode breaking down all the dynamics. But just what you should know here um, is that while, while all of this is going on, um, Don Ziger gets this ruling that he's supposed to turn over all of these personal documents, which he then appeals. Um, um, but this person, Judge Lewis A. Kaplan is a former tobacco lobbyist um, and somebody who has substantial personal um, holdings in Chevron. Um, so much so that in the past, I believe he has also um, recused himself from cases relating to uh, um, to Chevron, but not in this one. I would say that's an uh, admission of a significant amount of if you ever do that, a significant amount of, uh, of conflict there. See, no, I mean, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, so this shouldn't have even gotten as far as it did there. But again, too, if you go back and you read the, the pieces in the New York times from, you know, from those years back, there's really no me- mention of any of that. It's just like, Oh, well, look how great, how much this star has fallen. Look how much this hero of the environmentalist movement, look how much this hero of the human rights, um, legal professions movement has fallen, right? He is now being, you know, um, embarrassed in, in, in an American court. Right. So then, um, Kaplan handpicks judge Loretta Preska, um, who is this judge in the Southern district of New York, um, who, as I mentioned before, denied him jury trial, denied public access to the trial ruled against him, uh, time and time again. I mean, just kind of basic procedural stuff just made it hell, um, for, for them to be, to defend Stephen Donziger in court. Um, and let me share this picture with y'all right here. Cause this is pretty amazing. Um, like truly show that she had contempt for him, um, and these entire pr- proceedings. Um, uh, while I'm on, this is, uh, from earlier this year, uh, while I'm on trial facing prison, Loretta Preska, uh, my judge, jury, and fact finder has been casually reading the newspaper from the bench during witness testimony. It feels like it was over before it began. Um, and here's, you know, they don't allow cameras in there, but here is the artist's rendering of her reading a newspaper during the court proceedings. I mean, that's a, really is as clear as it gets. Um, but it also should be noted that she is a member of the right wing federalist society. Oh, um, yeah. Those guys. Yeah. Um, and you have to understand, um, too, that like, you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, um, so I'm trying my, my, my best to, uh, you know, to express to folks like how unusual this case is, right. Um, it, it, it needs to be noted that when this original suit is brought up against Don Ziger, um, essentially the government is gave prosecute, um, prosecutorial power, um, to a law firm that worked for Chevron. Right. So the, the prosecution in this case has been a private law firm. Um, again, that works or has worked in the past for Chevron. This is why this case is, is just so important. And it's, it, it's, it's important because it's a travesty. It's a kangaroo justice. court. It's a kangaroo court. Um, and look, we, we all know the problems with the legal system and, and the democracy in this country. Um, but if you, <laughs> this is even have different any hope for a better future. And you're sitting here watching our court system, right. Which is supposed to belong to the people, right. Our, our democracy, which is supposed to belong to the people being utilized to service um, the interests of, of corporations, not just in its rulings, but actually within its functions itself. Um, this is an extremely chilling and worrying uh, course um, this has been a horrifying uh, saga. It's using the courts to shake down somebody who uses the courts to hold the most powerful companies in the world accountable. 
Um, and there's yeah. nothing really more to say about it than that. It's well, there's two, well, there are actually just two quick things to say about it. The United Nations has recognized that this uh, case is a travesty, yeah. um, and they have called not only for this case to be thrown out, for Stephen Donziger to be freed, but for the United States government to pay him reparations um, for for the for the horrors <laughs> that he has gone through. And the last thing I, I just have to note is like, let's not forget that while all of this is ongoing, the people who were affected by Texaco and now by extension Chevron's greed and callousness to human life and the life of this planet, um, those people um, are still there in the wake of all of this. While you know American right-wing factions and corporate factions are doing everything that they can to intimidate a human rights lawyer. Um, this is something that we can't sleep on and we need to be uh, pointing people to as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah.